Well, I grew up playing hockey and baseball. Um, my dad was a hockey player, and I grew up in a town that was a hockey town. It was ponds and all that stuff. I started playing hockey when I was five, but I always drew. I remember when I was four years old and we were working on our house, my dad would just like give me a plank of wood and a pen, and I would just draw like army figures all over it while they did construction. That kept me occupied. For Nate Bebo, growing up in Amesbury meant two things, art and hockey. Art his passion, hockey just a hobby. Now the two are intertwined more than he ever expected. Like any other work, it's like I wake up in the morning, I take a shower, I come downstairs, I drink my coffee, and then I sit down to work. The only time I think about it is when I go to take a sip of my drink and I spin around and my wheelchair like knocks over my cup on the floor and then I'm like, oh yeah, I use a wheelchair. After graduating from college in 2010, Nate decided to move to St. Croix, a tiny island that sits 1,700 miles south of Amesbury. Equipped with only his architecture degree, Nate lived and worked on the island. St. Croix is a place devoid of suburban bustle and harsh New England winters. It is also the place where Nate's life would change forever. December 11th of 2010. I went out for a friend's birthday and uh, we ended up getting in a car accident on the ride home. We crashed, there was, there was actually two cars that had already crashed and then we drove into those two cars. They were able to fly me from St. Croix to Boston and they took me to Mass General Hospital and they performed, I wanna say it was like an eight hour surgery where they put my neck back together. And then I woke up the next day and that's where they told me what happened. I broke my C5 and C6 vertebrae. I don't remember anything, so I was, at one second I'm on a Caribbean island living my life, and the next second it's four days later and I'm waking up, opening my eyes in the hospital room in Boston, surrounded by my family, and I have a breathing tube in, so I can't even ask questions. You're just kind of in a bed, and they're explaining everything to you. It's very surreal. About a month later, I got transferred to Spalding Rehab Hospital, and then I spent about three and a half, maybe four months living in Spalding, doing rehab and learning how to use a wheelchair and just start this new life. That's where Nate met Ashley Cataldo, his recreational therapist who introduced art as the next step in his rehab. Finding out that he liked art and that was something that he used to do, I kind of was like, this could be something really great as a treatment plan. We figured out a setup for him and I would literally hold his arm and his elbow and his wrist and support him and he would coordinate all the movements to paint and draw. So his, his drawing was a little shaky, but his coordination for his level was incredible. The first couple drawings that I did, they were really scribbly, but they had a cool kind of character to them because I couldn't draw a straight line to save my life. Um, eventually, after just months of doing rehab and exercise, I gained enough strength in my shoulders to not need assistance from anyone else to draw. And from that point on, I was able to start drawing at home and do, do my own thing and start developing. Something that's always been an issue with me after my accident is I know that I need people's assistance with stuff. Once the pen was in my hand, I could draw. But what I was worried about with painting is, will I need someone to switch the paintbrush every time I want a different color? Or will someone need to be around to constantly be cleaning up? So the idea of not knowing was what kept me from painting at first. But then I was gifted a watercolor set and the nice thing about watercolors is you use one brush and your whole tray is there, so I don't need someone changing the paint every time. And once I started, I didn't really go back to just the pen drawings anymore. A big thing for me after my accident was having low self-worth when comparing myself to my previous self or comparing myself to what I thought the rest of the world was. I wanted to stop seeing myself through like this perspective of someone who had been in an accident. And, is recovering. It's been 11 years now. Like I, I can't think about that every day. Like I have to think about myself and like my artwork. To me, has nothing to do with disability whatsoever. You know, this is a hard journey, and he has pushed through and dedicated his life to his art and like really found something that makes him happy. I think it's just incredible. I'm a lot more confident in who I am, and I know what I can do now compared to before, where it was like, what am I gonna do? So now the question of what I'm gonna do 
it isn't a question anymore. Now I know what I'm gonna do. But now it's like, how am I gonna do it and how can we do it better? But I'm not lying in a hospital bed wondering anymore. <laughs>